Here's how long it takes to solve two corner pieces using the old Pachmann method. And now with Orozco. And now with 3Style. The idea behind Orozco is we'll solve using 3Style commutators. So the buffer is at UFR, so I'd memorize this goes to here, which goes to here. With 3Style, you would solve this all with one commutator. In Orozco, we use two commutators to solve this, but using a smaller set of commutators, that way it's easier to learn. So before I show you how to do it, here's just the idea behind how it works. This piece is the buffer, this piece is the target, and we add one more piece that is always this one, and that is the helper. So this target is the letter P, this is G, and I memorize in pairs. The first one in the letter pair cycles from the buffer to the target, so this piece gets solved, and what's at the target ends up at the helper, so that would look like this. So this piece is solved, and the next piece I'm solving is actually at the helper now. On the second letter in the pair, I'll do the reverse order. So from the buffer to the helper to the target. Next is an intuitive explanation of Orozco. To make learning easier, I'll show you some things that are technically not very good to do. But at the end of the video, I'll show you how to correct these. So here's a full corners only example. So remember, this is the buffer, this is the helper, and the buffer is the only important one when memorizing. So this goes to G, which goes to K, and so on. So starting with G, to solve any bottom layer target, the first rule is you have to know how to get it up to the top, specifically one of these two spots. So in this case, I can do R prime D R, and that gets it here. It'll always take at least three moves as you're trying to preserve everything else on top besides that one piece. So once you've found the spot it's going to, just take a look at all the three pieces, the buffer, helper, and target. Now one of the pieces will be at that spot, but the remaining two are both going to go to that spot, just in a specific order. So this is where we have to memorize in pairs, and here you have to remember the second rule, the first target likes the helper, and the second target likes the buffer. So G is the first target in its pair, which means it likes the helper, that means it'll only go up here if the helper is already there. The helper is not there yet, so we're going to do U to put it there. That's the first thing we do, and the second thing we do is move this one up, so now both pieces have gone here. The third rule is do a commutator, and commutator just means after doing the first two things, you reverse each of them. So we're going to reverse, and reverse. And there we go. Next we're solving K, which notice is actually not here, it's at the helper right now. So for K, we're going to follow the same rules. First, figure out how we're going to get it up to one of these top two spots. So K can go up here using D prime, R prime, D, R. K is second in the pair, which means it'll go up if the buffer is already there. And it is, so it's going to go up first. Then we're going to move that piece there. And then lastly, undo and undo. Next is O. This one can go up here, R, D, R prime. It's first in the pair, so it only goes up there if the helper is there, and it is. So we're going to move it up. Move the remaining piece there as well, undo, and undo. Next is X, and for any D face target, then these are a little bit harder, but I'll show you something now that's a bit of a beginner way of doing it. If you watch till the end of the video, I'll show you a faster way to do it, but for now, we're always going to move it to the bottom right, and we're always going to say it can move up to here using this algorithm. Okay, so it's second in the pair, it can go up here, and it'll only go up if the buffer is already there, and it is. So we're going to move it up right away and then get the remaining piece there as well, and undo, and undo, and then undo the setup moves. So here at B is where I chose to do a new cycle, and you'll notice B is actually the helper. If you get the helper, then you just do nothing. So we're gonna move on to the next letter. The next letter is F, so for any of these two, or these two targets, you're gonna start with an R2 setup move. So now just remember that the buffer was at the front, but now the buffer's at the back, and the helper's at the front. So now we do the same thing as before, but upside down. So F can easily go here, with R, U prime, R prime. But before doing that, since it's second in the pair, the buffer must already be here. The buffer's currently here, so we're gonna move the buffer here, and then insert this one. And then undo, and undo. And then undo the R2 setup move. So besides being upside down, this is also a little bit harder because you have to cancel moves, but you'll definitely get used to it. Next is A, and for any of these two targets, what you can just do is an A perm. So here's how we think about it. This is first in the letter pair, so it wants to go to the helper, and then the helper obviously then has to go here and here, and we have a cycle like this. So if you know how to do an A perm like that, that just looks like this. For blindfolded, this is not the best way to do A perms due to that regrip, but I'll show you the better way later. And finally, we have Q, and for this, just memorize it. You may already know how to do corner twists, but if you don't, here's one way you can do it. This is just upside down of the beginner method, so you can do this to twist this one, and then do the reverse of that to twist this one. So for blindfolded, how you know which one to do is for Q, you picture this because this is white where Q is, and for N, you picture that white is here. But we just got Q looking like this, that is because if it's second in the letter pair, you memorize the opposite case. If that didn't make sense, here's how to do it. 
Now, what to do for parity? So you should memorize and solve in this order. And if you get an odd number of corner targets, of course, that's when you have parity. If you use M2 for edges, the simplest answer I can give you is do this algorithm after edges. Then at the end of the solve, you can solve all of those at once using a J perm. But the better way to do it is to memorize edges in a way that leaves UF and UR swapped. Then when you're done with corners, you'll also have the buffer and target swapped, and this leaves you with a better J perm. Now, the even better but more advanced answer is to not do your last Orozco target, but just do that and parity at the same time. For example, here after edges, I've left UF and UR swapped, and here my last target is I, but instead of solving I normally, I can just swap these two and swap these two at the same time. Now, this can be done intuitively if you know PLL, so I can just move this one up here, and that gives me a Y perm. But L prime U2 isn't the best way to do this. Instead, I can do U2 R prime, and that sets up my Y perm here, and then do the Y perm and then undo setup. And next, correcting some of the inefficiencies I showed earlier. So for D-layer targets, I said you could just take whatever and move it under here, and then always move it up using this algorithm, but it's not very fast and has regrips. Instead, the better thing you can do is to move this up to the buffer using this algorithm. As you can see, it looks like it went here, but trust me, it did go up to the buffer because it's just offset by U. Then you can just do what you normally do afterwards. So when, if you're blindfolded, you can't tell, you can just do a U afterwards. As you're thinking, that brings the helper here as well. And then you would undo and undo. Then for the target back here, you do the same thing, but mirrored to the back. So to bring this to the helper, it would look like this. What you might be tempted to do is, for example, only learn how to solve this target. And then for this target, you just set up. That might be easier at first, but these two targets should be equally fast. If you set up one to the other, then you're making one of them slower, which is not a good habit to have in the long run. Next for these two D layer targets, so I'm just gonna talk about this one. What you can do is RF prime. Now I'm just gonna point out where everything is now. Here's the target and here's the buffer and here's the helper. So here's where you have to kind of understand how commutators work to make this thing work. Right now the target and the helper have a one move interchange right here and you can insert the helper to the buffer location with R prime U prime R. So this is a two move setup into just a normal eight move commutator. So for example, if this was first in the letter pair, I would do R F prime. And then first in the letter pair, it means that this wants to go to the helper. So I'd move it to the helper first and then get the buffer there as well. And then undo, undo, and then undo the setup moves. Next for this target, I do the same thing, but mirrored. So I can do R prime B and that sets the target here, the buffer here and the helper here. So for example, if this was first in the letter pair, I would make sure this can go to the helper. So move the helper down, move this over, undo, undo, and undo setup. For either of these two, which I said to do with A perms, it's better to have a regripless way of doing it. So for example, for this one, I can do R, F, R prime. So buffer, helper, target, this works the same way as for P. For example, if it was first in the pair, then I would move the helper over, get this one up, undo, undo, and then undo setup move. Then for this target, same but into the back, I can do R prime, B prime, R. And now it's over here. So if it was first in the pair, I can move it up to here, which is the helper. Move this one over, undo, undo, undo setup. Next, I have some Orozco tips that will also help with freestyle. The first thing is just getting used to doing commutators in solves. So for simple eight move commutators, the rhythm is really easy. It's just three, one, three, one. But if you have one of the cases where moving up to the top takes four moves, since there's a U and D at the same time, a really easy trick is just if there was a D in the beginning, there will be a U and D at the end. If there was a U and D in the beginning, then there will be only a D at the end. For the U layer cases where you have to cancel moves, just remember that when your starting R move goes upwards, then the first D move you'll do is D. And when your R move goes downwards, the first D move you'll do is D prime. So if you apply these and do a lot of Orozco solves, that gives you a lot of intuition on what feels like a commutator and what doesn't. And often in your solves, you won't know exactly what you're doing, not the same way you would for like PLL or OLL, but you'll be able to feel if something is correct or not and memorize far less information just by knowing how commutators work and also how you can make the transition from Orozco to 3-style even easier. Often there'll be a really easy 3-style commutator, such as here to here to here. These two have a one-move interchange, so you can just move one over, insert this one here, and undo and undo. Another easy case is, so here we have this to here to here. If one piece is in D and the other one is one of these two on the U face specifically, then you can just do a commutator really easily. So instead of using the buffer and helper, I can just use these two where I treat this one as the helper. So now that this is the helper, this is first in the pair. So I want to go to this one first, move it over, move this one up, undo, undo. 
So that's it for my tips on Orozco corners. And if you think Orozco isn't for you yet, you can check out one of these more fundamental tips on the end screen videos. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.